ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد we're still discussing the second fundamental which is knowing um, the religion and the first issue that the author mentions is knowing uh, of knowing the religion he mentions that it's three levels so the first is Islam and then Iman and then Ihsan so within talking about what Islam is he mentions the five pillars so first we went over what the five pillars are and what or su- some of the opinions and evidences for uh, someone who leaves either or any one of the five um, and we mentioned that uh, there's a consensus um, from all of Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah all of the Muslimin in general that someone who doesn't say the Shahada isn't Muslim so and then we went on and discussed that there's a difference of opinion about the other four so we did that and then we began talking about the conditions of La ilaha illallah so we said that if someone just says La ilaha illallah unlike what many people misunderstand this isn't sufficient for them to be Muslim in the dunya uh, or in the akhirah the only time it's sufficient is for someone to enter into Islam in and of itself but it doesn't keep someone in Islam by saying well I say la ilaha illallah unless there's a number of other conditions so uh, we began s- by saying that <coughs> the scholars have mentioned many different conditions for la ilaha illallah some have mentioned that it's seven some have mentioned that it's eight and some have went, <coughs> went on to mention other conditions and really it all depends on how someone divides it up the point isn't what number we pick the point of it is that we get what is needed and that we have what is needed and if someone happens to say that the conditions are 50 and they say but and they include everything and someone just divides it differently and says it's only 10 but they include everything in it that's only that's that's all that's relevant so if someone comes along and says no I don't think it's 7 I think it's some other number but they're saying the exact same thing that's what's important in the end so it isn't necessarily the number and the reason for that is because there is no clear text from the Quran or Sunnah that says this is the number this is merely uh, an extraction or a deduction that the scholars have done by looking at the texts of the Quran and Sunnah and saying this is a condition for la ilaha illallah this is a condition for la ilaha illallah and so on and that's why they've reached different numbers Shaykh, uh, do I keep questions to that? Yeah, it's better, yeah. So, last week we talked about the first condition of la ilaha illallah, which is having knowledge of it. So, meaning, uh, knowing what it actually means. And we talked about some examples. I mentioned one and some others mentioned some other examples that just saying the phrase doesn't actually, uh, doesn't actually mean that the person um, enters Islam. So, just saying the phrasing. If someone doesn't know what the Arabi means and they say la ilaha illallah because they see it on a paper, this doesn't do, this doesn't do anything for them entering into Islam. <coughs> and we mentioned um, the evidence for that. So the second condition, which is where we stopped last week, is yaqeen, which means certainty. So it means that there's no doubt in the meaning of la ilaha illallah and there's no doubt in the person believing that it's true um, and so on. So there's no doubt and no... Uh, you know, no, no, no type of doubt whatsoever has entered the person's heart into the truth um, and the correctness of la ilaha illallah. And the evidence, or some of the evidence that the ulama have mentioned for this condition, is when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Inna al mu'minun al ladina idha dhukir Allah wajilat qulubhum wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadathum imana wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun." And also when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and that's from Surah Al Anfal at the beginning of Al Anfal. And when Allah SWT also says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَيْكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ Which translates as, Only those are believers who have believed in Allah and His Messenger. And afterward, no doubt has, uh, and afterward, doubt not. Until the end of the verse. And that's from Al-Hujurat uh, 15. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the believers are only those who believe in Allah and His Messenger and that they have no doubt or no uh, 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 raib. No raib has come to them. That's the ratabu, that's the, the, um, that's the, uh, the root word of, of, of what's being discussed here. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restricted Iman to those who didn't have doubt and, and more clear than this about this topic is the hadith um, from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu um, that he said or that the Prophet sallallahu said فَمَنْ لَقِيتَ مَنْ وَرَاءَ هَذِ الْحَائِطِ يَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ مُسْتَيْقَنًا بِهَا قَلْبُهُ فَبَشْهَرُهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ Which translates as uh, that Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet وسلم, was speaking to him and then he said to him um, uh, whoever you meet behind this wall so they were standing behind a wall and he said so whoever you meet behind this wall who bears witness to لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ with certainty from his heart, then give him glad tidings of the Jannah. Um, and that's narrated by Imam Muslim. Um, so this is evidence that the Prophet ﷺ didn't just say that testifying to La ilaha illallah was sufficient to enter Jannah or that he would enter that to give him glad tidings of Jannah, but it was that uh, they would have certainty in their heart of it. And just a side note on this hadith, which is narrated by, by Imam Muslim, Abu Huraira mentioned that when he went and behind or, or passed by this wall and the first person that he found was Umar ibn Khattab anhu. so subhanallah how he just happened to be the person that, the, that he was the first one so not only was he included in this amongst his very uh, you know his many other uh, attributes but he just happened to be the first person that Abu Huraira met after the Prophet ﷺ told him of this so it's just a uh, a side note on the greatness of Umar ibn al-Khattab that even these types of things that are would seem coincidental he actually would fall into them as well um, and also um, another evidence for, for certainty and that doubt um, isn't or that having any sort of doubt would nullify the, the shahada or would make the shahada invalid um, and that the person wouldn't benefit from it is the hadith from Abu Huraira as well that the Prophet Sallallahu said أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأني رسول الله لا يلقي الله لا يلقي الله بهما عبد غير شاك بهما أو فيهما إلا دخل الجنة which translates as from Abu Huraira that he said that the Prophet ﷺ said I bear witness that there is no, nothing worthy of worship except Allah and that I am the messenger of Allah no slave meets, his, meets Allah with these without having doubt or having no doubt in these two except um, he'll enter the Jannah it's Abu Huraira. In English or Arabic? It's uh, I bear witness or I testify that there's no nothing worthy of worship except Allah, and that I am the messenger of Allah. No slave meets Allah, having no doubt in these two, except he'll enter the Jannah. And that I am the slave of Allah. I am the messenger of Allah. So here again, this is another evidence where the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned the Shahada and he didn't just say whoever says La ilaha illallah. I'm sorry, where was this narrated then? Muslim. Um, so again, this is the second uh, condition. So people who say whoever says La ilaha illallah, that's sufficient. We obviously know that. How could saying it be sufficient when you don't know what it means, when not only do you know what it, have to know what it means, but you actually have to have no doubt in what it means. So just merely saying it obviously um, would, would, uh, would make it invalid. So this is the second condition. The third condition that some of the scholars mention is acceptance. So acceptance of the shahada, um, acceptance of everything that it means linguistically, as well as everything that is necessitated by it. So saying la ilaha illallah necessitates a number of things, and saying that Muhammad Rasulullah necessitates a number of things. So just saying it again, and even if you have no doubt, but you have to accept everything that comes along with it as well. So this would be if someone says la ilaha illallah but they say I don't accept the ahkam of the sharia though I just accept that uh, that nothing is worthy of worship except Allah but um, I don't agree with the, the rulings that came with the sharia then this is something obviously the shahada is invalid because everything or the shahada entails um, many things and uh, necessitates many things and the evidence or some of the evidence that is mentioned for this is, the, is the, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَكَذَلِكَ مَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ فِي قَرْيَةٍ مِنْ نَذِيرٍ إِلَّا قَالَ مُتْرَفُوهَا إِنَّا وَجَدْنَا آبَاءَنَا عَلَى أُمَّةٍ وَإِنَّا عَلَى آثَارِهِمْ مُقْتَدُونَ قَالَ أَوَلَوْ جِئْتُكُمْ بِأَهْدَى مِمَّا وَجَدْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَكُمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا بِمَا أُرْسِلْتُمْ بِهِ كَافِرُونَ فَانْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ Which translates as, and similarly, we sent not a warner before you, or so no, no warner was sent before you to any town but the luxurious ones or the the, the ones who were 
um, you know, had a high status amongst them, would say, we found our fathers on something, uh, following a certain way of, or the, of a religion, and we will indeed follow their footsteps. Uh, and, and then, he, um, so the, the, the messenger would say, even if I bring you something that's better in guidance than what you found your fathers upon, they said, verily, we disbelieve in that which you have been sent with, we, so we took revenge from them or all upon them, then see what the evid- or what the end result was for those who uh, denied, who denied the, the Sharia or denied what the Prophet came with. And that's from Surah Al Zukhruf, t- uh, 23 to 25. So here we see that they rejected it. So the re- mere rejection is sufficient. So not following or not accepting to follow what the Sharia has come with. Um, is enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy you in the dunya and there's no one who would be destroyed in the dunya as a, as a group except that they were, uh, were kuffar or that the fasad had spread so, so far within them that they were beyond saving um, and in a long hadith from Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu that he said that the Prophet sallallahu said مثل ما بعثني الله به من الهدى والعلم كمثل الغيث الكثير أصاب أرضا فكان منها نقية فبلت الماء فانبتت الكلى والعشب الكثير وكانت منها أجادب أمسكت الماء فنفع الله بها الناس فشربوا وسقوا وزرعوا وأصابت منها طائفة أخرى إنما هي قيعان لا تمسك ماء ولا تنبت كلى فذلك مثل من فق من فق من فقها في دين الله ونفعه ما ونفعه ما بعثني الله به فعل فعلم وعلم ومثل من لم يرفع بذلك رأسا ومن ولم يقبل هدى ولم يقبل يقبل هدى الله الذي أرسلت به which translates as the meaning of which the example of the guidance and the knowledge with which Allah has sent me with so meaning the Sharia obviously is like an abundant rain that is falling on the on the earth some of which, so some of which the earth was fertile soil that absorbed the rainwater and brought forth vegetation and grass in abundance. And another portion of it was hard and it, and it held the rain and Allah benefited the people with it. And they utilized it for drinking, making their animals drink from it and for irrigation uh, and cultivation. So they would take this land and they would benefit from it. They would drink from what the earth held and they would use the the vegetation for themselves and they would use the, the water and the vegetation as well to feed their cattle so everyone benefited and the Prophet ﷺ continued in the meaning of which is and a portion of it was barren which could neither hold the water nor bring forth vegetation the first is the example of the one who comprehends the religion of Allah and gets benefit from it which Allah or, or benefits from that which Allah has revealed through me and the last example or the second is that of a person who didn't raise his head to it and does not take the guidance uh, that Allah, uh, from uh, guidance of Allah that I was sent with, and that's narrated by Al-Bukhari. So the point of this hadith is the Prophet Sallallahu is saying that the only benefit that you get from the Sharia is when you accept it. So the, merely the Sharia coming to you, if you don't accept it, you're not going to benefit from it. Not in the dunya, except maybe secondarily if the people around you accept it and they get a benefit and you happen to you know be amongst them and benefit from it. But the true benefit in the dunya and any benefit in the akhirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending the sharia from the Prophet sallallahu or any of the prophets before is only through accepting it. Just like if, if, the, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a rain and it floods and floods and floods, merely just having the water, if, if you don't do anything with it, is not going to benefit you. So if the ground that you're with just soaks it up and it doesn't leave it in a, in a way so people can drink from it, it so that it's hard in certain areas... And it doesn't uh, then take this water in and uh, vegetation comes from it. So you can eat from it and you can feed your animals. And that. So what's the point of the water then? It didn't benefit anyone. If anything, it's worse for you because it would, it would flood and it would do this. And same thing with the sharia. Allah SWT is sending the sharia and you not accepting it. Is, it's not going to benefit you and it's actually going to be worse for you. As opposed to the person who accepts the sharia. He'll benefit from it by believing in it and acting upon it and calling to it, like we've talked about before. So this is the third condition um, that the scholars mention for uh, the shahada or Islam in general. The fourth that they mention is inqiyad, which is submission. 
And some of the evidence that they use for this is when Allah Taala says, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمْ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ Which translates as, and turn in repentance and obedience with true faith to your Lord and submit to Him before the torment comes to you and, they will be, and then you will not be helped. And that's from Az-Zumr 54. So Allah SWT is ordering us to submit to Him, which is Islam or Inqiyad is another word that's used for it as well. So merely saying La ilaha illallah but then having uh, pride to enter into Islam or being Muslim but having pride or claiming Islam and having pride to follow the Sharia or to accept the, that actually what came to us in the Sharia is actually correct or it's more correct um, and more deserving to be followed than your own intellect or your own opinions or your own teachings that you've learned at university or what your parents do or what your country does. Merely saying La ilaha illallah won't benefit you unless you actually submit to what this actually means. Because other, again, what's the point of saying La ilaha illallah and saying I believe in it and I have no doubt about it uh, and then not following it? Again, it's, it's, it won't benefit you. And other, another evidence for this is when Allah Taala said, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ وَاتَّبَعَ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا which translates as, and who can be better in the religion than the one who submits his face to Allah uh, and he is a muhsan and he follows the millah of Ibrahim as a hanif and a hanif is someone who stays away from any type of shirk um, and Allah did take Ibrahim as a khalil and we talked about before a khalil it's, it's a mistranslation to call it a, as a friend so they say that Ibrahim was the friend of Allah. It's, it's, it's not a very precise translation. The better translation or better explanation is that the Khalil is from the Khulla, um, which is the highest level of love. So this is to say that it's just a friend, is, is a, it doesn't really give the, the complete meaning of it. And it also you know, gives almost like a misunderstanding. If you say he was Allah's friend, it doesn't give the, you know, it's not a very good way to explain it. In which uh, In Nisa, 125. So submission doesn't mean <coughs> doesn't mean uh, to submit to the qadr of Allah. Well, like we talked before, the submission is two types. One is that you accept the qadr, uh-huh. but we're we don't In even even that's a, even that's not very precise to say that we say that every everyone every creation that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created is already submitted to the qadr, like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, tawan or karha. And you, they're, they're, either, they're either doing it willingly or, uh, you know, forcefully because you can't get out of it. But there's people that like it. There's some people who, so they submit to it uh, willingly, so that they're uh, at a higher level in that they <coughs> accept it. But the true type is Islam because if you if you truly enter Islam, then you've accepted all of everything from Allah. So how would you define, like, in this, what would I put, like, a, Here it's Islam. Islam. Here it's referring to submitting to by Islam. entering into Islam, oh. yeah. yeah. So submission is... Could be best defined by submitting into Islam. Like that's the that's the specific, when uh, the default understanding that we should have if we hear Islam or uh, submission, and you know it should be referring to entering Islam in the religion. But so submission in itself means that like you accept everything from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right. So if someone's truly a Muslim, they would have already done the first one, right? Which is accepting the Qadr. Yeah. But the opposite won't always be the case. Someone, some you, you'll hear Christians and. Jews and you know you know agnostic not agnostics but like people who just believe in God but they don't believe in a specific religion they might say oh well you know this is what God wanted for me that doesn't mean you're Muslim though yeah, yeah. you know it's it needs the it needs the full submission which is entering into Islam so this is the fourth condition the, the fifth condition is Siddiq or truthfulness so meaning when someone says it they're actually saying it truly they're not saying it because they're being forced um, or for some sort of dunya reason uh, merely it's it's actually a true uh, it's a it's a they're saying it out of truthfulness um, and some of the evidence that the scholars mention for this is in surah al-ankabut verse 3 when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said am hasiba an-nasu ay yutraku ay yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun wa laqad fatanna alladhina min qablihim fala ya'lamanna allah alladhina sadaqu wa la ya'lamanna al-kadhibin which translates as do the people think that they will be left alone to say la ilaha illallah or to say that we believe and they will not be tested? And we indeed tested those who were, who were before them 
so that it will be made known those who are truthful and it will be made known those who were liars uh, and other evidence that, that, that yeah yeah um, one and two, three. 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 two and three yeah um, and also in the hadith when the prophet said يشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله صادقا من قلبه إلا حرمه الله على النار which and this is from معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه that the Prophet ﷺ said, the meaning of which is, there is no one who testifies to La ilaha illallah and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah truthfully from his heart, except that Allah will forbid him upon the fire, so he'll never enter the fire. Or, depending on what's the, the ex- explanation, that he'll be forbidden to be staying in the fire forever, you know, depending on what level of, uh, uh, of iman he's at and what level of sins and so on. So this is the evidence for the fifth condition, which is truthfulness. The sixth condition is ikhlas, or sincerity. So someone needs to be saying this sincerely from their heart, They can't, be, which is similar to truthfulness, but there is a slight difference in the two. Um, and this evidence for this, or some of the evidence, is when Allah SWT says, أَلَا لِلَّهِ الدِّينُ الْخَالِصِ Or surely the religion, uh, or the, the surely the sincere religion is only for Allah so Allah SWT is saying that the one that is that will be for him is the sincere one so if it's not sincere it isn't actually for him and he won't um, he won't accept it um, and that's from Surah Az-Zumar uh, 3 and the Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu um, As'adu nas bi shafa'ati yawm al-qiyamah min qala la ilaha illallah khalisan min qalbihi and in one of the sense and the or oh nefsihi so some of the narrators mentioned a, a doubt between qalbihi or nefsihi the point of it is that he's saying it um, sincerely and that's narrated by al-bukhari <coughs> and the seventh condition is mahabba or love so that you have love for allah and the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and for the sharia or the deen in general and for the muslimin and then you, and that this necessitates what uh, the opposite of that. So you hate those who oppose Allah and the Messenger and the Sharia ah, um, and the Muslimin in general. So it necessitates the two. So mainly having or merely having love for the Muslimin and then saying, but I also love everyone else equally. Then obviously, the, what's the dif- what's what's the difference or what's the point of having that? Um, and some of the evidence that the scholars mentioned for this is when Allah SWT said, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Which translates as, And from amongst mankind are those who take others besides Allah, or besides uh, as rivals besides Allah. They love them as they love Allah, but those who believe, uh, ha- but those who believe, um, are more strong in their love for Allah. Um, and that's from Surah Al-Baqarah 165. Um, and so here the, the scholars of tafsir differed on what is the meaning by this verse. When Allah SWT says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Does it mean that the Muslimin love Allah more than the kuffar do? Or does it mean the Muslimin love Allah more than the kuffar love the, the partners that they set up besides Allah? And Allah Alam, there's no, I mean, there's no real contradiction between the two, because obviously the believers would love Allah more than the kuffar love Allah, and a true believer should love Allah more than the kuffar love their gods, because if we believe or we know that Allah is the true and the only one who should be worshipped and the one who sent us the Sharia, then there's no reason that the kuffar should love their gods more than we love Allah. Isn't the ayah though, talking about uh, So they're like not, they're not even loving Allah Wouldn't that, like, would that, would that mean like That's what, that's what some of, that's the reason why some say that it's uh, Like the talagheet or the idols But then the some say, you know, what, what is meant أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ مِنَ ال يعني, So Allah SWT said that the Muslimin are more loving to Allah. Also that, that, that means so the, some of them say, part of the ayah then. 
Right, so that's okay. why some only look to the first, some said no, the second explains it. So I mean, okay. it, so that's uh, that's where it comes from. And Allah SWT also said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرُ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ That's uh, which translates as say, if you indeed love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and for- forgive you your sins. And indeed Allah is... Or and and Allah is all forgiving, all merciful, and that's uh, Ali Amran, uh, thirty one. And the Prophet Sallallahu said in the Hadith of Anas ibn Malik that, uh, or that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين." From this Hadith from Anas that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "None of you believes until." I am more beloved to him than his father and his son and all of the people. Um, and that's narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Um, except in the narration of Muslim it's switched. So it's it mentions the son before the father. And some of the scholars have mentioned different benefits of having this before that or this before that. So this is the seven conditions or this this is the way, uh, you know, the the number that I chose to discuss them in. Um, and like I said, some of them some of them add to that. The eighth is disbelief in the taghut because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "فَمَا يَكْفُرُ بِالْتَاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدِ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوَثْقَةِ." And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, um, "مَنْ شَهِدَ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَكَفَرَ بِمَا يُعْبَدُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ." So he placed the condition on this. So some of them uh, make it an eighth condition. Some of them say that it's not an eighth condition. It falls under ikhlas and it falls under um, you know some of the other conditions. So the point of it is, like I said, as long as the person has all of these things, this is what's necessary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the, like, the seven conditions, Shaykh, mm-hmm. you quickly realize like you can't accept one and leave the other because Subhanallah, like most, like all of them are related in one way or the other. Like how exactly. can you have sadaq without ikhlas? How exactly. can you have ikhlas without mahabba without ikhlas? Exactly, so Allah, it's, it's almost impossible that to have one and not the other, or you'd have a very, very, very small amount of one and none of the other. Like yeah. you can't, where you can't have like I've got all of this fine and I have none of the other. Like it's almost, you know, it's it's not uh, it's not really possible. Sorry, okay, how would you differentiate between sadiq and ikhlas? Uh, sadiq is more that you're the you're doing it for the correct reason. Ikhlas is you're only doing it for Allah. So it's more the sincerity. There's one is that it's true. One of them that it's being done sincerely. Only you know it's not divided up for a number of reasons. So there is a kind of a tie between the two. But if you look close, there's a slight difference between them. So someone could differentiate between the two. So next, I just you know we're continuing or finishing up with the shahada uh, because like we said, that's the first uh, of the five pillars of Islam. So we'll talk about the meaning of Muhammad Rasulullah or the meaning of Muhammad as the Messenger of Allah. So Allah SWT, uh explains this and gives the conditions ver- you know, very often in the, in the Qur'an um, talking about what is, if we accept the Prophet SAW as that he's come, that he's the Messenger of Allah, especially if he's the last Messenger, then it comes with a number of conditions. And this should necessitate that people do and accept a number of things. So the first um, and one of the clearest verses that explains this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا Which translates as, but no, and here the no means like it's a negation, not knowledge, but no, by your Lord, they cannot have faith or they can have no faith until they make you a judge in all of their disputes between them and they find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and they accept it with full submission and that's from Surah An-Nisa uh, 65 so here Allah SWT is saying that they'll have no faith and a rule that we can put um, a rule of Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah is whenever Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the Quran or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in, in the Sunnah negates Iman off of someone Then we say the asl Or the default Is we should understand That it's it's a complete negation So if the Prophet ﷺ says No one believes until this We should say We take it As meaning That the person isn't Muslim Until we have 
uh, another evidence to explain this specific thing as being not necessarily um, a condition for Islam or that, that not having it wouldn't be wouldn't be kufr. So here when Allah SWT is saying they don't believe or they'll have no faith until they do these things, then we understand that this is negating Islam off of the people. So no one would actually be a Muslim until they um, have these have these things. And then so he went on, Allah SWT says, until they make you a judge in all of their disputes and find in themselves no resistance to your decisions and they accept them uh, with full submission. So here Allah SWT is mentioning uh, the, the, that this is the way we should look at the Prophet Sallallahu if we truly believe in him. That whenever there's a matter in the deen or the dunya, our first thing should be what is the ruling on this from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And once we find it, we should accept it. We shouldn't say, oh, but so-and-so says this, or I don't want to accept it because I'm going to be poor, or I'm not, I don't want to do this because someone's going to be angry at me, or, or, or whatever the case may be, or this is how we do it in our country, or whatever else. This should be the way that we uh, the way that we look um, at the Sharia, and also Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ," which translates as, "And whatever the messenger gives you, then take it, and whatever he uh, forbids you from, then uh, stay away from it." And that's uh, from Surah Al-Hashr, verse seven. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُطِعُ الرَّسُولُ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ Or that means whoever and whoever obeys the messenger, then he has obeyed Allah. Uh, and that's from uh, Surah An-Nisa, verse 80. And this is an important point to understand. And this is, you know, some of us have discussed this recently, that there's a group of people that they say that they don't accept the sunnah. So we accept the Qur'an, but the sunnah we don't accept. And these people... They're kuffar according to the ijma' of the Muslimin. Imam al-Suyuti mentioned in his book, Miftah, uh, Miftah al-Jannah, uh, that the Muslimin have, have formed consensus. So from the time of the Prophet ﷺ up until his tide, but so up until then there was no dispute amongst the Muslimin that if someone doesn't accept the sunnah as a whole, that they're not Muslim. So this idea now that we have these people, and some of us even saw them this week, uh, that they say that they only accept the sunnah, they only accept the Qur'an, these, these people aren't Muslim. How can you be? How can you say La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and then reject half of that, half of that, uh, that shahada? What does it mean to say the messenger is, or the Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, but I don't accept what he's come with? But, uh, also, the verse is clear uh, in the Surah Al Rahman uh, about like whoever doesn't obey Allah and our Rasul, then in Allah he will be Right, right. So Allah SWT very often will Yeah, Allah SWT will very often put obeying Allah and obeying the messenger together. So then to say and to say and we know that uh, when it comes to specifics more has come in the sunnah on specifics than has come in the Quran. Specifically on how to pay the zakat, on on how to how to perform the salat, on the things that are haram and halal and we know that the Quran or the sunnah has come to clarify the Quran. So how can someone then, how can someone actually even believe in the Qur'an if they don't believe in the Sunnah? When Allah SWT tells us to follow the Prophet and we say, yeah, we'll follow him, but the thing that he came with, we won't follow that. Well, then how are you going to follow him? So this is just a side point, you know, the, that if Allah SWT has placed his, the status of the Messenger of Allah so high that, or Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so high that we have to uh, look to his judgments and accept them without any, um, any uh, doubt or any even having any um, hardship or any any sort of uh, you know discomfort in our heart when we when we accept his 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 judgments, but then to say but everything that he judged as a whole we don't accept it. That's it's 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 something that you know children would look at and say how can this can't even be correct. It's clear, kufr. I mean, uh, you, it's, I mean, you've rejected half of the sh- half of the shahada yeah, that you're saying you're believing. He rejected that he's a prophet. Well, what if, like, I, I had one time, like, long, long time ago, I was watching the news in Egypt, especially. They yeah. Much, like, they're famous, the Quran, mm-hmm. you know. Whatever. And he was explaining, like, he said, we believe in the prophet and we believe in his hadith, but most of the hadith are they are maldu'i, like, they are put by people just you know, to divert people from real Islam. They all, yeah. He's like, we should follow only Quran. And that's how he he pointed it. And he, he, he referred to so many hadith, hmm. especially the hadith that uh, the one whoever works, and then at the end he does yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, how, how, that, how can you explain that? You know? mm-hmm. At that point, there won't be any 
it won't be ju- just yani, at that point. But uh, that's how we understood it. Yeah, yeah. How I understood. That yeah. shows yani, they, 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 instead of saying we accept the sunnah in general, we know it's the truth, so we have to reconcile between the sunnah based upon the sunnah. They say, no, I'm going to look for specific ones that I can understand. This one that's thing true. I don't understand is evidence that the whole thing, the whole is, wrong. thing is wrong. Yeah. So it shows that they're not even being sincere. No one would do that, even if someone came to you and told them about his life, about your own life. No. You wouldn't say, this thing didn't make sense. Everything he said is a lie. You'd say, you know what, I accept, you know, I accept this, you know, you're, you're telling the truth, but I don't understand this. Can you explain it better? Yeah. It shows it's not even true. It's not even sincere what they're doing. Yeah. So you can't even recognize these guys as Muslims then? No, no. no if an in, but if an individual says, I don't accept this specific hadith, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a different issue. No, We're saying people who say we only mean, follow the Quran. Like I reject hadith completely. 100%. Uh, uh, right. I mean, that's that's that's, that's what we should differentiate. If someone if someone rejects a hadith, even if it's for a false reason, like some people reject it based on their own understanding, yeah. this is something different. It still could be kufr, depending on the reason. But to say that um, you know, just the Sunnah in general, I don't accept. Yeah. Okay. That's what they say, man. They right, they don't say we don't s- specific hadith. They say in general we don't accept the sunnah. They'll tell you all of the, all the sunnah. They'll be like, well, not all of it, some of it. Then they'll be like, some of it, not all of it. They just keep switching. Because they can't. They can, how can you how can you have Islam without the sunnah? No, but they won't admit. Like they'll say it, then they'll backtrack. Then because they know it, it's like. Isn't, isn't there's a hadith uh, that talks about them, like uh, the Prophet yes. There's a hadith that, that says. Like, yeah, he said, لا لا أجد أحدكم متكئا على فراشه يقول ما ما وجدنا هذا في كتاب الله يعني the meaning of the hadith that I shouldn't see any of you reclining on his bed or on his couch you know saying oh I didn't find this in the book of Allah like so meaning the point of it is to so like how casual they are talking about the religion it's not in the Quran who cares about it like okay wait what was that narrated that for me off the top of my head, I can't remember. Is it always said that I don't want to find any of you? I should I shouldn't find any of you leaning back, on, leaning back on his 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 uh, his firash or his like the you know something to relax upon saying. I don't find them in the yeah, the meaning of the hadith is that yeah. Okay, so and what verse was it? The Surah Nisa, the one where when, uh, eighty. Verse eighty. Yeah. The first one was sixty-five. The second one is eighty. <coughs> Sheikh Mustafa once gave a khutbah about them, put them oh, in yeah? their place, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, uh, how can you only accept uh, the hadith for salah and reject everything else? So the Prophet lived uh, I saw Sam around uh, 24 years, and let's say there's 12 hadith about you know, salah and this and that. So you're saying the Prophet I saw him, uh, spoke uh, once every two years? Uh, yeah, yeah, this it's, it's doesn't... Sense, uh, he said. This, I think once... The, the way they explain the hadith according to, like, they misunderstood the hadith. And, and you take it as a proof that oh this is wrong. The right. problem is that understanding. It's not a problem that it's wrong. It's problem is you're dumb. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you know what I mean. Like I mean, so you're you're you you don't understand anything. So that means the whole sunnah is wrong. How about saying you know, any someone who's even just would say you know what, I accept the sunnah. I know it's right. I don't understand this hadith. There has to be explanation for this hadith, but I don't understand it. So I accept it in general, and the specifics of it I'll accept when someone explains it. I mean, then They they haven't rejected anything. They've admitted their weakness in in their <coughs> aqal or in their in their in their intellect, and everything's fine. The, they also the, the extremists are trying to say the Quran is so perfect we don't need any other text to uh, to come with it. Then why did Allah Subhanahu wa Taala send the Prophet with it? Exactly. With the Sunnah, like and, it. And they also say that he was he was literate to begin with, so why would he, anybody need to write down his Sunnah? He can he can read and everything, you know. You can disprove these people from the Quran itself because the Sunnah explained the Quran. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So this is uh, the end of that of so of the Islam part of the book. Um, so next, the author um, discusses iman, or he says the second level is is uh, iman. So Khalid, if you want to read it. Iman consists of more than seventy branches. The highest of them is saying La ilaha illallah, and the lowest of them is moving a harmful object from the road. And haya modesty is a branch from iman. Its pillars are six. Number one, that you believe in Allah. Second, His angels. Third, His books. Fourth, His messengers. Fifth, the last day. And sixth, that you believe in Al-Qadr, the divine free decree, and the good and bad of it. The proof for these six pillars in Allah's statement. A righteousness is not that you turn your faces towards the east and the west in prayer, but rather righteousness is for the one who believes in Allah in the last day, the angels, the books, and the prophets. 
Surah Al-Baqarah 177. And the proof for the Qadr, pre decree is Allah saying, Verily, we have created all things with Qadr, or divine pre decree ordained for it. Surah Al-Qamr 49. Let's go stop there. Um, so here the author goes on to talk about Iman. So, and like we said, he, or we can see that when he divides it into these three Islam, Iman, and Ihsan, it's going back to the hadith of Jibreel, which is from Umar ibn Khattab and some of the narrations, and Ibn Umar, and uh, from, from Umar, and I think Abu Huraira as well, and so on. That this is what the Prophet Sallallahu said um, in his response to Jibreel when he asked him about his religion. And he asked about what is Islam, what is Iman, and what is Ihsan. So this is the second part. So the author mentioned evidence from the Quran for these six pillars. So the first was when Allah SWT says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبِلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ Which translates as, It is not righteousness that you turn your faces towards the east and the west, but righteousness or birr is, that, is the one who believes in Allah and the last day and the angels and the books uh, and the book uh, and the prophets. So here five of the six are mentioned and then he went on and said, or he mentioned that when Allah SWT said, Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. Or indeed we have created everything through qadr, which is the predestination. So here uh, this is evidence for these six pillars from the Quran. And the evidence for these six pillars from the Sunnah is, is like in the hadith of uh, Jibreel that we just mentioned. Um, and also the author began this section by mentioning that Iman is 70 odd branches. Um, so here, and I kind of alluded to this before, when we talk about what is Iman, it depends on what's the context that we're talking about. So sometimes Iman just means the Muslimin, as a, or Islam as opposed to disbelief. Other times, Iman is a level within Islam. So we say that Islam is the base level, Iman is the middle level, and Ihsan is the uh, highest level. Other times, Iman refers to the inward acts of Islam, and Islam refers to the outward acts of Islam. That's like in the Hadith of Jibreel. So depending on the context, we should understand what is being discussed about Iman. So here, the author mentioned two of these contexts. The first is when he mentioned that Iman is the second level. So this is refer going back to the Hadith of Jibreel, in that when we talk about Islam as a religion, Islam is the lowest level, Iman is the middle level. So no, this is... the third one you said? Ihsan. Okay. No, no. Uh, when you said Iman could mean the opposite of disbelief, and then could be a level in Islam, and... It could be a level in, a, in Islam, it could also refer to the inward, and Islam is referring to the outward. Oh, yani the qalb. Oh, okay. And, and similar, like when the Prophet ﷺ, uh, mentioned that, uh, you know, when he just talked about Islam, he talked about the five arkan, or the five pillars, and when he talked about iman, he talked about belief in Allah, and and the, and the, the other six pillars. So here he was referring to the to the six or so to the six inward pillars of iman. So here it's important to understand. Isn't that wrong to say that iman is just the inward? Pillar? Depends. Like we said, if if we say if we uh, couple Iman with Islam, then one refers to the inside, one refers to the outside. If we just say Iman in general, and we just leave it at that, it's referring to the whole deen, inward and outward. E even in the Quran, when we say Iman, by itself... Oh, you who believe, yeah, it's referring to... I mean, because we wouldn't say it's only... It applies to the people who believe in the inside, not on the outside, so or... So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking, He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, it's to the means that... It's the, the people who entered into Islam and in the their heart on the outward. Yeah, the full submission. Yeah, you, they they satisfied all the same right, conditions right. we talked. Yeah, the best the best of right. Them. That's that's who those are the ones who believed. Everyone else is required though to follow it because you should be a mu'min to begin with. But so those are the ones that are being referred to. Does it distinguish between Muslim and mu'min? When Allah says, "Ya yeah, ladina amanu," because the Qur'an al Arab and man al exactly. So that's why. When it comes to Ya Yuhal Ladin Amanu, it means everyone. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, we'll say if someone is a sinner, he doesn't have to do this thing. Mm -hmm. Because if he's only reached this level of Islam, not the level of Iman, then that means when Allah SWT says, Ya Yuhal Ladin Amanu, Kutiba Alaykum as that means if he's, if he's only on the level of Islam, he doesn't have to fast. Mm -hmm. 
then it's, it's we're making the deen yani, only for certain people. Yani. So if you're good, you have to do more. If you're bad, you don't have to do anything. Like it's, mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense. But the one about وَقَالَتْ الْعَرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُلُوا أَسْلَمْنَا This is about the levels. Mm-hmm. Yani, so they have yeah, the base yeah, level yeah, of Islam. Yeah. You haven't reached the level of Iman yet. Yeah. Yani, so, mm-hmm. yeah. I think we talked about this. A little bit, yeah. yeah it's yeah. a very, very long topic. So it's it's tough to... You know, just uh, you know, do it very quickly, though. But you gotta, you gotta always look at the context, right? Exactly. Yeah. And like, sorry, I still don't get. I feel more Because we'll leave it. So, and then when the when the author says that iman is seventy, I think he he mentioned seventy, right? Mm-hmm. Ah, Khalid? Yeah, seventy or sixty? Seventy. Seventy. Yeah. So this is based yeah. upon a hadith um, from Abu Huraira, uh, radiallahu anhu, that al uh, iman. Bid'un wa sab'un shu'aba and other narration is bid'un wa sittun shu'aba and other one is bid'un wa sittun aw sab'un so it mentions uh, both so al bukhari rahimahullah narrated it with al iman bid'un wa sittun shu'aba wal haya'u shu'batun min al iman so al bukhari's phrasing is iman is 60 odd branches and uh, humility or shyness is a, is a branch of Iman. So this was Al-Bukhari's phrasing. And a, a narration of Muslim was Al-Iman bid'un wa sab'un shu'aba wal haya'u shu'abatun min al-Iman. So the same thing as Al-Bukhari except he mentioned 70 odd branches except for six, ex- instead of 60. And in the longest narration of this hadith is as well from Abu Huraira and it's narrated by Imam Muslim that the Prophet ﷺ said الإيمان بضع وسبعون أو بضع وستون شعبة فأفضلها قول لا إله إلا الله ودناها إماطة الأذى عن الطريق والحياء شعبة من الإيمان. So in a narration from Muslim, which is the longest one of of, the, of these uh, narrations that the Prophet صلى Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, إيمان is seventy odd branches or sixty odd branches. The highest of which is لا إله is this is saying لا إله إلا الله. And the lowest of which is removing a, harm, a hardship or a harm off of a path. And f- humility is a branch of, uh, of faith or a branch of Iman. And again, that's uh, narrated by Muslim from Abu Huraira. So in all of these things, it's important to see that these people, when they say Iman is only in the heart, here the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that it's 70 branches, uh, the highest of which is a statement of La ilaha illallah. And the lowest of which is um, uh, removing something off of the path, a, har- a harm, which is uh, again is an action. And he mentioned that fa- that humility is a, a branch of faith. And humility, it would be in the heart, but it's something that would brick would show itself on the actions. So we know if someone's shy, they might not say certain things. They might not go certain places. They might. Uh, act a certain way. So all of these things we see that this idea that people have that Iman is only in the heart is a completely false statement because when the Prophet ﷺ said not only one of the branches but the highest of it is on the tongue is, is saying La ilaha illallah and like we talked about before if we go in the Salat has been called Iman and purification has been called Iman and so on. So we know all of these actions are called Iman. Um, and inshallah we'll stop there. Um, Next week we'll go into the actual believing in Allah and the angels and and see where we get. Uh, And we'll open it up for questions now, inshallah.